So in this video here, I've got an iron head-to-head -head and it's the hollow iron battle here with the Ping i500 iron going against the PXG 0311T in the Gen 2 version. So two hollow irons, both seven irons, got GC2 HMT on the floor here. I'm gonna give you a little bit of feedback on my personal thoughts between these two irons, a little bit of feedback, look at some ball data and see which iron possibly will outperform. Okay, so just before we jump into the video and you haven't already subscribed, please consider doing so. Hit the right hand bottom screen here, logo MNG. Hit the uh, bell icon to get notifications of any future videos and hopefully we we'll, can improve your game, give you guys some little bit of knowledge through golf tips, through product testing and hopefully improve your games. So we've seen the hollow irons sort of come out into the market from a number of the brands um, available now and obviously PXG and Ping are both offering one here. So PXG we're going to start off with here. I've got myself set out uh, on the launch one is into a green here on the simulator so i've got, I've got the 0311t which is stands for tor so this is their small and most compact iron offering in the new gen 2 uh, range here hollow head and is filled with an elastomer sort of substance um, inside it so providing um sort of nice sort of ball speed that pxg are claiming Nice sort of sound, acoustics, and also soft to feel. Forged head here, and this is the Gen 2, which is the newer version, obviously, from the Gen 1. Now, as I sit that down by the golf ball, it sits lovely. It's a lovely shape. It's a beautiful rounded toe section there, minimal offset, sort of medium to thin top edge there, very sort of clean lines looking golf club. Then when you turn it around in the back, obviously, it's a little bit more, I would call like an industrial sort of look here with these sort of black, uh, sort of sort of screws in the back of it. Now they they are interchangeable. They're fixed, um, but I quite like the look of that. It's different. Not everybody's cup of tea, but I quite like the look of that. It's a little bit different. Okay, so let's get this first one hit with the Gen Two. Okay, so that's a nice opening shot there. That's pretty much on line. Yeah, and that's carrying out, uh, yeah, very nice and straight shot there. That's carrying out 169 there. So straight away there was sort of feeling a nice soft feel from the from the Gen 2 PXG here. You know, it's that hollow head, it's that substance in it, which I think is great for sound. It gives that sort of muted sound and that softer feel that you expect from a forged iron. Obviously this is forged. Uh, as we know, but this is a 7 iron here and this is lofted in at 32 degrees of loft. So a little bit on the stronger side here and obviously this is their more tour offering here in terms of the head size uh, compared to the other models in the in the PXG sort of iron family. Okay, so that was a little bit lower in the face. It's flighted fine there, but I definitely caught that a bit lower in the club face. Again, really nice and straight. Looks to be stopping quick. That's 168, so it hasn't dropped off massively there, uh, which is quite interesting. So good, still a good bit of ball speed there to still hit a similar distance to that first one. Two, two different strikes there. Definitely a little bit low in the face on that second one. Okay, again, that's a solid hit. Little bit up that right side. Just catch that right edge of the green. Yeah, again, but stopping quick. 170 carry, spin in there. That's about seven and a half thousand spin there. So there's a lot of spin on these, to be honest. That is stopping really quickly there. So lots of control, which is what you sort of want from this type of iron. And I'm guessing the, the play that's going to go into that type of iron in terms of the T model, that small, more compact head, is going to be the better player who wants that control. Not too worried on that distance, but wants that stopping power when it comes into land. Definitely uh, a higher spin number there. It's a nice shot, lovely flight. Yeah, it's a superb feel. You can't fault PXG there on the field. The way they come off the club face is superb. Okay, so we're gonna hit one more with the PXG and then we'll move into the Ping i500. But looking at the carry numbers here, very consistent with the PXG around that 168 to 170 mark. Quite a tight front to back dispersion. That's hopefully this last one will sit in with that uh, little grouping. Yeah, nice strike. Just pulled that. Is that going to hang, hang on to that green? Oh, that's a nasty little kick. Okay, so that's uh, 172, so a little bit more yardage there, just slightly pulling that. 
but again, feels superb off the club face, feels fantastic. So, right, let's move into i500 with pink and we'll see how that stands up against the PXG. Okay, so now I've got the pink i500 in my hands here. So again, seven iron, but what I've done with this, I've got the retro spec in the i500. Reason for that is the standard loft in i500, seven iron, is coming in at 30.5 degrees. It's one and a half degrees stronger than that PXG. So with the retro um, spec, it's actually two degrees weaker. So this takes this to 32 and a half, where PXG is 32. So then there's only half a degree difference here. So I'm trying to get this loft as, as close as I possibly can, and half a degree is not huge between them. So this is gonna be pretty equal on the test. Very similar spec here um, in terms of length and light and flex so let's get this first one hit with a ping i500 okay so tiny bit low on the club face it's a very high ball flight there hitting the green nicely looks to be stopping pretty quick 167 there that spawn at just under 7000 there so quite similar numbers to start off with that first one that wasn't the greatest of hits either to be fair so with a look to the i500 sitting that down by the golf ball it's a very similar shape and we probably all know the pxg took uh, ping's head sort of designing so we definitely see that ping look in the pxg products here and it is a very similar shape in rounded toe very minimal on the offset medium to sort of thin top edge and again it's a beautiful look i think they've done a great job ping with this i500 and it definitely fills a category there that, that maybe that golf who wants that player's look but ultimately needs that forgiveness behind it and this is where this product really sort of sits in and it's a bit powerful as well so it's it ticks a lot of boxes really i think again it's a hollow design here but the, there's nothing it filled inside the head of the i500 so acoustic wise it is slightly different i found that on that first shot there just a slightly higher pitch sort of sound against the pxg let's just have another hit here and just all if you can try and pick this sound up on the video here. Yeah, it's a definite louder ring. I'm not sure if you guys are picking that up there. I'm definitely am. Um, I think because of that, uh, hit the green nicely, 167. Because of that hollow head design, I'm, I'm guessing the sound is gonna be sort of rattling around there, which gives it that sort of higher acoustic sort of sound. So it's a little bit more explosive sound and not as a, a softer forge sort of sound that you would generally uh, sort of get back uh, as feedback and also the sound is very much related to what we feel as well yeah definitely a louder sound to that now, it's interesting here because ping that's hit the green all right there so ping have put the word forged on the back of this club here and, it, and it's a forged head the whole body of the of the iron isn't forged it's just a forged face here so for me it doesn't give you that forged feel okay the sound doesn't give that forged sort of muted soft feel that you'd expect from a forged iron and it, it feels quite explosive off the club face with that sound i think helps to give you that feel as well the pxg for me definitely a softer product it's softer feeling it's a forged head it's got that material in there that's dampening sound dampening feel i think through other irons through brands when we see that substance inside a head or behind the club face it dampening sound it gives you that softer sort of feel it, it definitely sound is linked with feel there yeah it's a really high ball flight really high that's definitely going to stop pretty quick when it comes into landing yeah there we go so 169 stops pretty quick that was at 7200 spin there so no, again very similar to the pxg no issues there controlling that when that comes into land okay so we're going to hit the last shot here with the ping i500 and then we'll look at some numbers between the two in a little bit more detail that's a nice shot yeah, that's right down it yeah really nice and straight there yeah nice one to sort of finish on on there with the i500 okay so we've hit both clubs there i'll give you a little bit of feedback on that sounds and and how the ball sort of comes off but let's have a look at some numbers between the two i think this will be pretty close to be honest uh, between that pxg and the i500 
Okay, so looking at some numbers here between the Gen 2 and the i500, so you see club head speed there is, is pretty identical, touch quicker with a Gen 2, but not by much at all. Ball speed, pretty identical again, the touch quicker Gen 2, probably because of that little bit more club head speed. Launch angle is quite different though, so it's got a couple of degrees difference on the launch there. So lofts are only half a degree more with the i500, but definitely a couple of degree more launch angle with the i500 there. Spin number pretty identical there, 7.2 and 7.3, hardly anything in it there. Side spins pretty identical as well, so both performing very, very similar in terms of the spin and the side spin on it. Peak height is different though, so with the i500 launched a little bit higher there, with a tiny bit more spin, you can see the peak height is a good three yards more. Descent angle's a couple of degrees um, more um, vertical coming into land, so it's going to stop pretty quick. And there's only two yards difference between them on carry 169 against 167. Okay, so there we have it. Uh, two, two really good irons for me, you know, PXG against i500. Uh, number wise, if you can see very, very similar there, maybe just i500 just launched that smidge higher there. Well, quite a bit higher to be honest on that launch angle, but um, only giving up sort of two yards of distance there, which is for me, two yards isn't going to call it between uh, sort of two clubs there. So let's go through this. Let's go through looks first. I think it's a tough one. Looks, they both look very, very similar and very nice. You know, I think i500 is a great looking club. So is the PXG. It's a tough one to call it on there. In terms of feel, I think there's only one, for me, there's only one, one clear winner there, and that's PXG. The feel of that is just phenomenal. It just feels amazing off the club face, soft. feels like the ball's on the face for ages. It, it's such a nice feeling golf club. And I think I-500, yeah, it says forged, right? it's a forged face, but I think without that substance inside, you get that slightly loud acoustics there, which takes away that forged resemblance in a way. So definitely PXG in terms of the feel off the club face. In terms of numbers there, as I say, not a lot to split the two there. So probably if I'm, obviously there's a price tag difference to sort of think about and weigh into this equation. So you've got to think, well, is it that much more better in the field for the price tag you're going to pay for PXG against the i500? I think probably the answer for most people would be no. Let me know your thoughts on this video. Comment down below, PXG, i500. Have you got PXG? What are your thoughts? i500? I think they're both cracking irons there and they're both going to do a job. But as always... And my message on most of the videos is go out there, get fit, testing yourselves, shaft options, grip options, lengths, lies, get them fitted for you, make sure they're right for you as an individual. Thanks so much for watching, guys. If you haven't already subscribed, please do so. I very much appreciate it. Trying to grow the channel as much as I can, which will allow me to get more content, more clubs from the manufacturers to get out to you guys for testing and reviewing. So, you know, please do hit that subscribe button and hopefully I'll catch up with you all very soon.